What is up XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. Happy Friday. I want to talk about in this video why the USA is different. A lot of people are talking about de-dollarization, the US dollar not being a world reserve currency. I was listening to Mario Nawal's Twitter space. It's like a Twitter spaces that he does and he always has 10,000 listeners. Elon Musk has came into his Twitter spaces. Very influential Twitter space with a lot of smart people talking. And this guy says a lot of interesting stuff about the USA that a lot of people kind of push back on. So I'm just going to let it speak for itself. XRP whale volume is surging. Elon Musk is blaming the Federal Reserve. Good to see. And what happens if Ripple loses the case in our journey to a $14 XRP price? Looking at technical analysis and pass price fractals. As always, guys, thank you for watching my videos. This content's nothing without the audience. So I love you guys for supporting the channel. We've had a great month on YouTube, my best month yet. Nothing without you guys. So I want to take a moment. Thank you guys for the support. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Like, I, if you watch my content, I hope I've give you a warm vibe. I genuinely mean that. So um, some of my videos are 10 minutes long. You're giving me 10 minutes of your day and that adds up between a thousand people. So God bless you guys. Thank you. Let's hop into this. NFT pictures are worth the value of a house. This is not the future of NFTs. This is though American Airlines or sorry, Airlines Argentina recently announced the world's first blockchain based NFT digital system. Yes, there might be NFT board ape yacht club profile pictures right now that cost the same value as a house. Some have sold for millions. This is hype. This is an example of too much money being in the economy and in crypto. This is the future of NFTs tickets, real estate, tokenizing value on the blockchain. The most important thing that you need to understand about an NFT is it proves undeniable ownership. So any organization, any niche or industry where you need to have verifiable ownership, NFTs will thrive. What is the effect of the XRP lawsuit? Will it be a splash or a tsunami? Well, let's take a, a listen to what Ox Labs and former SEC lawyer has to say. She says the general impact could be highly specific to the facts of the SEC versus Ripple case, limiting any broader impact. Or the court could release an opinion that reaches more legal issues and has a more dramatic effect. Others say that the case has been overhyped and really won't have a major impact, and this is what I think. Regardless of who wins, the actual impact on regulation is near zero, other than the fate of Ripple itself and its council and executives. If Ripple wins, it will be a pretty significant public relations win, even if it's not an important legal one for the industry. Keep in mind, guys, the SEC governs just one organization, and that's the United States. Nowhere else does the SEC have authority, and they're already overstepping their boundaries in the USA, and we're seeing that with other regulators, congressmen, pushing back against the SEC. Moving forward, guys, take a listen to this clip from Jim Cramer. SEC says, look, they're creating securities day after day after day. There's a Ripple case. They may not even win the Ripple case, but the Binance is very different. So if you guys watch this channel enough, you know that we tend to do the opposite of what this guy says. He, he advised people to invest in Silicon Valley Bank. Yes, the bank that went under weeks before it, talking about it being one of the top picks of the year. Now this guy is saying Ripple might win the lawsuit. I know we say we do the opposite. But it's good to see, see mainstream media pawns like this coming to Ripple's side and starting to realize the value in the XRP token. Speaking of XRP, if you guys need an exchange to get XRP or Flare, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, it's simple, and secure, and it's where I buy my XRP every single day. A link to Uphold in the video description below. Moving forward here, comment your thoughts on what's going on with Donald Trump right now. Politics aside, I've heard arguments that this lawsuit is much more bigger than left or right, Democrat or Republican. This is about human rights, freedom rights, and the legitimacy of our justice system. thought this was a funny picture, though. This is going to be him after he gets out of the pen. But yeah, give me your thoughts in the comment section below about that. Basically, the attorney general in Manhattan is super, super biased. And Governor Ron DeSantis has pushed back and he says Florida will not issue an extradition request given the questionable circumstances at issue with the Soros Back Manhattan prosecutor. I don't want to get into politics, but the takeaway from this lawsuit is that it's not, I mean, it is about politics. It's very politically charged, but this is a lawsuit that's going to underpin the future of the civil justice system if Trump is indicted on these 34 felonies that they're alleging. Stuart Alderati pushing back against the SEC. He says the SEC's $2 billion funding request includes $700 million for 1,500 enforcement staff. So how much of this is for rulemaking to provide actual guidance versus more enforcement actions that stretch theories? 
and the SEC's jurisdiction far past any faithful allegiance to the law. Very spot on. And a great offer, guys. If you want $41 guaranteed, sign up with Webull, deposit a penny. You can get up to 3000 in free stocks. Typically, you're just going to get 40 to 300 bucks. but it's a great offer just for signing up, depositing one penny. You're guaranteed $41 in minimum stock value. Sell your stocks, close your account, do whatever you want, but don't miss out on this great offer with Webull. It is USA only. A link in the video description below. Moving forward here. And if you guys do use Twitter, the best spot to tweet information at me, engage with me, is on my Twitter. I include a lot of information I don't cover in videos. I have my Twitter at the bottom, as you can probably see right there, also in the video description below. What do you guys think about this? I might have talked about this in my last video, but another toxic train boat derailment. I speculate on my thoughts right here, but it seems like these are popping up way too common as of recently. And Elon Musk says the Federal Reserve is making countries want to stop using the U.S. dollar. With all this de-dollarization talk, he couldn't be more spot on. Why would a country want to use the dollar and expose themselves to massive inflation and trade risk because the U.S. printed more dollars in 2020 than they printed in the previous century? So we think inflation is bad in the U.S.? Any third world country that relies on the dollar is being hit magnitudes harder. That's why you're seeing countries like Venezuela with this massive rampant inflation. Our inflation in the U.S. is bad, but we still are blessed beyond measure if you compare us to other countries in the world. And that's something we, we need to forget. Cryptocurrency and money can somewhat take us away from the things that are most important in life. And a great saying is, if everyone realized all the blessings they have had in their life right now, they would not need anything else and they would be totally fulfilled. But we live in a materialistic charged world Money is the motive. And at the end of the day, you, me, we may have different lives. We may have all had different life experiences. But if you choose to see the blessings in your life, overnight you will be more happy. Your your mindset is your biggest asset or your biggest enemy, right? Um, end of rant. Thanks for listening to my TED Talk. Moving forward here, trading volumes for XRP have spiked to the billions of dollars on three of Korea's top exchanges by volume. At the start of the video, I was saying XRP in this Ripple lawsuit is only in the USA. And we're seeing billions of dollars of trade volume where? In one of the biggest financial hubs in the world, South Korea, Southeast Asia. The interest comes amid speculation that XRP might be classified as a commodity, not a security, by the CFTC. Just to back up the de-dollarization narrative even more, Brazil and China to settle trades in their own currency ditching the US dollar. I say this is the downfall of the dollar in real time. And the interesting question will be, as these BRICS nations start to use other currencies for trade, as the global share of, or as the market share of global trade for the US dollar shrinks, what is the US going to do? Are we just going to let them take the reins to the economy? Or are we going to fight back and start a war? What do you guys think? Is the US just going to give up global economic dominance? Or are they going to start a war? Something that they like to do a little bit too often. And right here, guys, fractals and price charts tend to repeat, them, repeat themselves. Um, history doesn't repeat itself. Price action doesn't repeat itself. But it often does rhyme. And this guy is speculating based off the run-up of a token called Luna, which had a terrible downfall because of things unrelated to the token. Using the exponential increase of that token from around $0.40 cents to $14, he just copies their price run-up. Now, something interesting about XRP that you can't say about Luna is we have the lawsuit, right? And XRP on the price chart is looking great right now, but this lawsuit is an external factor that could cause XRP to price uh, pump immaculately. Keep in mind, last time in 2017, when XRP went up 1,500%, that was all based off retail FOMO, retail speculation. Give us the lawsuit, give us a positive outcome and regulatory clarity, and that price is going to go crazy. Even if there is no positive outcome, XRP and Ripple have to relocate to a new country. I'm still super bullish on it. There's too many long-term government partnerships. They're already working on over 20 CBDCs. In the past year, when the whole crypto market was in a downtrend, Ripple's on-demand liquidity product, which leverages XRP, grew 800%. They hired 35% of their workforce in the last year. This is all in a downtrend. So imagine what happens in an uptrend. There's a lawsuit could really pump the price like crazy if it's a positive outcome, but ultimately it's not going to harm XRP long term. It's not going to hurt Ripple as a company. And now for this clip from Mario Narwhal's Twitter space. If you guys are still watching the video, 
comment Mario in the comment section below. You've already been with me for 10 minutes. I appreciate your time. I really do. And when you guys press the like button, when you subscribe, it gives me feedback. It lets me know I'm putting out good content. I'm not just saying smash the like uh, just to get numbers up. Yes, it helps the channel, of course, but only press the like button if you're trying to let me know you enjoy the content, you learn something in the video. It gives me positive feedback to know my content's on the right, right path. So take a listen to this clip. Comment Mario below. Military with 85 military base in 85 countries. There is there are U.S. Marines. So I mean, this type of influence is not only not replaceable, but it's irreplicable, and. China, any attempt that China or Russia makes to do it will be met with immediate resistance. No country on earth, no meaningful country. I think Nick was up here earlier. Or somebody else was up here. I can't forget. I remember his name, but <clears throat> he was mentioning that there's this, a small island nation, the Solomon Islands, that <laughs> allowed for Chinese military cooperation. That's not meaningful. It's a population of 700,000 people, right? Meanwhile, the United States has 40,000 troops in Germany. 30,000 troops in Japan, 15,000 in Spain, 13,000 in France. You, this is real influence. When a country Doc, is dependent I'm on you for security. I'm going to one point about okay, Solomon Island. Go for I it. Apologize. Challenge, interrupting. challenge Challenge me on it. Go for it. So it's not about, you're right about the population. You're right about that. But the thing is, what China is trying to do, if you look at the Solomon, Solomon Islands, you look at a map, those were the same islands that the United States fought a very, very bloody war. With I'm not Japan saying over. they're not strategically important, Nathan. I'm saying they're not a good testament to the notion that there will be inter international acceptance of Ch a Chinese expeditionary military. That's what I'm saying. But the difference is, here's the thing. And here, they and, are strategically and, important. I'll agree with you on that. So that's the point you're making. Yeah, but if that's the point you're making, you're missing my point. That's not my point. My point is not that they're not strategically important. So if you're about to make a point like, hey, they are strategically important because of X, Y, and Z, that's not my point. My point is that the Solomon Islands are not a good example of a nation that has welcomed Chinese military influence to then use that example to project the acceptance of Chinese military influence in other countries. That's all I'm saying. Can I, can I make something to your point, which is <clears throat> all the arguments you made could almost be made for the, for the uh, British Empire. Right, what changed that was the industrial age, in U.S. them having that technology first in U.S. Right now, there's a race for quantum computers. China's currently because of resources and because of the BRICS. The industrial in a much age is what changed it. Though. Sorry, the industrial age is what changed it. The fallout of World War II is what allowed for that to happen. Yeah, and what allowed us to win that? It wasn't because of the industrial age. And we were yeah, able to rally everyone to build up the, the reason we needed to. The fallout of the World War II is the reason that there's U.S. soldiers in 85 countries. And and there's, again, without an event like that, that would fundamentally change the borders across the world, then anything we're talking about right now is irrelevant anyway, because no one will know how that ends. Right. So, yeah, barring World War Three. In but which, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a border war anymore. If you have a quantum sure, commuter, sure. But that, it's not a border is, is war. Because World War II was a border war, in the fallout of World War II, the United States was able to build an international ex expeditionary military. And it's not just about our naval power. Everyone wants to resort to like, well, China's building more aircraft carriers, the Chinese Navy is growing. No, it's not just about naval power. An expeditionary military requires infrastructure globally, military bases bases globally you don't just build those overnight right we, we have 80 China years has been doing military that military infrastructure that's built Stop talk. would you agree would you agree that if china or china or whoever anyone in the BRICS, gets a quantum computer before the u.s u.s loses its dominance now we're talking about something else entirely now we're talking but, about no we're not talking about something else computing we're, race. Yeah, that we're is talking about question. neon gas comes from ukraine russia currently occupies that territory you need that to build silicon chips the BRICS developed the CDE, which is a research project to build to build a quantum computer using all the talent from those countries, which is a much bigger amount of people than in the U.S. Like there's this actual serious risk. I'm not bringing something like trying to change the topic. 